not too much bait, just enough to hold a few fish. Really effective rig that is, and it's worked an absolute treat. Two or three of them are my go-to hook bait whenever I'm fishing for small skimmers, even up to big bream. Don't really like to cast off braid directly. The way I've caught them short is very similar to the long line. It's been really, really important. Be positive. Feeder fishing for bream and skimmers is a really popular method for both match and pleasure anglers and there's no place better to run you through my approach than where we are today, the mighty Southfield Reservoir. Bait choice for today, I'm going to keep really simple. I'm going to kick off with the ground bait. I'm using the mainline match Sweet Marine. Got loads of confidence in this mix, caught lots of skimmers and bream, especially at Southfield on it last year. But in my experience, at Southfield and any venue that's quite coloured, I prefer a green coloured mix. So adding a few drops of the Captivate BT and Green just turns the ground bait into a nice dark colour which the fish can sit over nice and confidently and home in on. Other baits that I've got with me, can't go anywhere We're fishing for bream and skimmers without worms. Really nice finely minced chopped worms works really well at Southfield and I've also got some dead maggots, just dead red maggots, really good hook bait and feed got some pinkies just in case the fishing's a little bit harder three or four of them can be a really killer up bait and I've got casters I like to feed these on my shorter line which I'll run through a little bit later I think they just keep the fish grubbing around and keep them in the peg for a little bit longer and also one of my favorite hook baits here at Southfield has to be red worms two or three of them are my go-to hook bait whenever I'm fishing for small skimmers even up to big bream and finishing off with sweet corn what I like to do with this is just slip an odd little bit throughout my loose feed throughout the day. I think a lot of the time that bright visual colour, the bigger fish like the bream and skimmers which we're targeting can home in on it and especially in the springtime and the summer you get quite a lot of problems with nuisance fish like smaller roach and smaller skimmers so slipping an odd piece of this on will just target those bigger fish. I'm fishing two lines today, one at 30 metres and one at 50 metres. And on the 50 metre line, I've opted for a 12 foot Aventus distance feeder rod. Absolutely love this rod for Southfield. It's got enough power to get me to the distance accurately, but enough forgiving action to land bream and skims and not pull out of them. And today, it's not that windy, it's actually quite calm. So I've opted for the lightest tip for the 12 foot Aventus distance feeder. I've got for the one and a half ounce tip. I like to fish as soft a tip as possible but Southfield can be really windy and create a lot of tow, and I don't like to have too much of a bend in my tip. So if that is the case, I'd opt for the two ounce tip, slightly heavier, less of a bend. Running down to the reel, I've got a TDR distance reel, and that's loaded with O10. It's actually a new prototype braid today, which we're trialing out. Hopefully it'll be out soon if it's up to the job. And that's matched to a 10 pound shield shock leader. I like that 10 pound heavier mono line when I'm casting out. Don't really like to have cast off braid directly. That shield shock leader just gives me enough power to whack it out there nice and confidently. Then running down to the rig, I've got a helicopter rig. And how I've actually tied that, I first of all, I slide the smallest super tight line stop up onto the shield shock leader. Then followed by a, the smallest little quick chain swivel, which we'll be bringing out later this year then it's actually followed by another super tight line stop so that's almost a little bolt effect if you like then it's a case of sliding on a snap link swivel and then i tie a little twizzled boom only around two inches don't like too long a drop i like almost a really tight bolt effect especially when you're fishing at long distances then you simply trim off the tags slide your feeder on and you're away really effective rig that is it never tangles even when the wind's hacking in your face you get perfect presentation then running down to the hook length I've got 65 centimetres of O13 N-gauge matched to a 14 match special hook. Again, this hook will be coming out later this year. Brilliant for bream and skimmers. You can fish maggots, red worms, anything. You never lose any fish on them. And on my shorter 30 metre line, I've chosen the 11 foot N-gauge feeder. Slightly shorter because obviously we're fishing closer in. It's got a nice soft forgiving action. Perfect for catching bream and skimmers.
kicked off the session feeding five medium bait up feeders at 30 metres, packed full of worms, casters and maggots. I want a little bit of bait on this line because I'm not actually going to start fishing it until a couple of hours in, so I don't want there to be absolutely nothing there because I don't think it's going to hold the fish. And then onto my 50 metre line, which I'm actually going to start fishing on, I've fed three medium slimline feeders. Not a massive feeder, but in that I've put a little pinch of worms, an odd maggot, not too much bait, just enough to hold a few fish. Because in the early parts of the session, you want to try and get off to a good start. So I don't want to pile it in on both lines, because if it's not the right way to go about today, at least I've given myself an option by feeding one line negatively. So I started on that medium cage feeder. And a cage feeder is a great way to kick off a session because I think it draws a lot of fish into your peg. Bits of bait come out on the way down and it releases your bait really quickly. And it's definitely worked because 10 minutes in, I'm instantly getting liners. But it's prompted me to change. I didn't have an actual bite. I've had a couple of liners. So the next cast, I've quickly swapped over a small exchange window feeder. A window feeder offers completely different form of presentation. One, it's less bait, and two, it actually remains in the feeder until you wind back in. So it gives them fish a little bit more focus on your hook bait, and it's worked an absolute treat. I've had a skimmer about two pound in the first 15 minutes, and I feel like I've learned a lot already. Fishing with that window feeder on the long 50 metre line has been working really, really well. But it's quite interesting. It's not a simple case of chuck out and you get dragged in. It's just not one of them days. So what I've been doing is swapping back to the slimline feeder, which is a cage version. Like I said earlier, it draws them fish in. And that's been really important to prime the line up. So without a doubt, the window feeder has been the feeder to use when you're actually trying to catch a fish because it protects all that bait and that loose feed. So all they can eat is your hook bait. And interestingly, swapping over to red worms, which I said in my bait section is one of my favourite hook baits for bream, has worked really well. The bite times have reduced and I've even caught a lot bigger fish. But the line's gone a little bit funny now. I'm getting an odd line, which indicates to me that the fish have come in. So my 30 metre line, which are primed up with those bait up feeders, feel like it's time to give that a go and have a really strong finish. Today has been a perfect example of why it's important to prime and be positive on that short line to give yourself a chance of a really strong finish. It's later in the day now, the fish are naturally going to be coming in and it's been really, really important to be positive and we've had a fantastic finish catching bream, skimmers. The way I've caught them short is very similar to the long line but I've stepped it up a notch. I've gone for a medium window feeder and rather than just putting a little smatter and a bait in, I'm putting the lot through, packing the feeder full of particles, smearing it with ground bait to keep them feeding fish there. What a day that's been. Feeder fishing for breeze, doesn't get any better than that.